Hi, I'm Dave Chandler. I'm a technical architect with Worldwide Technology. And today I'm going to do a brief presentation on what are behind some of the trends in software-defined networking. Let's start with the definition of software-defined networking, which is one of many, by the way. But this one is from the Open Network Forum that describes SDN as an architecture that will allow our networks to be more extensible in the future. The business value for software-defined networking is centered around rapid deployment of new applications and technologies and also the reduction of operational cost. Let's look first at why there is a business need for software-defined networking. Despite advances in hardware and protocols in the networking space, the evolution of networking remains significantly behind what's been done in the cloud and compute environments. Today's economy demands, essentially, two main factors, speed and agility. For years, we've been building networks that look something like this, built with highly available devices that have redundant components and redundant paths. The networks we've been building are, are fixed. They're designed to be stable, and we hope that they're rock solid. We're now starting to see a dramatic change in the requirements for our networks. These are driven by the advent of cloud computing in the data center, by the massive amount of video that we see on our networks today, through mobile devices that are becoming more and more prevalent in our world today, and also the sheer volume of information that's transmitted across both corporate networks and public networks. These factors are now driving new needs in our networks. Agility, simplification, and also increasing the business value is becoming increasingly important. And that's where software-defined networking comes into play. We see two basic approaches to software-defined networking, or SDN. One of them is what I refer to as a purist approach, and the second is a hybrid approach. In the purist approach, the control in the data planes, which have been traditionally co-located on the same device, are now decoupled, and the underlying network infrastructure is abstracted from the applications. The primary advantage of decoupling the control plane from the forwarding plane is that with a centralized control plane, you have a global view of the entire network. You can program flows to extend from one end of the network to the other, and you can also carve the network into slices. This is especially attractive to the academic community, where they want to do research on new protocols and new network techniques, but don't want to provide a completely separate infrastructure from their production environment. The purest approach uses open source software and open source developers to provide these new applications which run on the centralized control planes. This slide represents the transition from a traditional network to a software-defined network using a separated control plane. What you see here is a representation of the data plane. The white lines represent the packet streaming between the physical devices and the red boxes are the control planes that are directly attached to the forwarding planes and the red dotted lines represent the control protocols that allow these autonomous devices to form a federation. OpenFlow changes this configuration and logically centralizes the control planes providing a global view of the network. Another way to look at it is in this slide. Note that the switch silicon, which is the hardware, the application programming interface, the network operating system, and the network intelligence, which is the programming of the switch or the router, are all located on the individual devices in the network. With OpenFlow, we remove the network intelligence and the operating system and place them in the centralized controller. Next, we'll look at the hybrid approach to software-defined networking. The hybrid approach is generally supported by the legacy network device manufacturers. It includes OpenFlow, 
but also allows programmatic access to the network by other mechanisms, including vendor-specific application program interfaces and also legacy control protocols like command line. In addition, the hybrid approach allows the use of network overlays to build logical networks on top of physical infrastructure. An example of a network overlay would be something like Cisco's OTV, which is Overlay Transport Virtualization, which allows you to extend Layer 2 networks across Layer 3 infrastructures. If you look at a simple diagram of hybrid SDN, we can begin with our basic diagram with our blue forwarding planes and also the red control planes connected together by protocols. But what we'll add on top of that is a controller that allows us to use either OpenFlow or the vendor-specific APIs or the command line interface providing a significant amount of flexibility and also allowing to us to protect our investment for existing networks device. And then, of course, the controller would connect through northbound APIs, which are referred to as RESTful APIs, to the network application or the network hypervisor. This slide is a good review of the hybrid SDN process. The network applications and orchestration devices use the extensible controller to use multiple mechanisms to talk to the network devices, providing simplified operations and enhanced agility. Software-defined networking will introduce some new problems into the networking space. The largest of these being the increase in complexity. Today, we have to deal with the complexity of the user interaction, meaning the knowledge that a user has to have in order to program the network, and also the network operating system that they're using. Now we're introducing applications into this process. The applications are generally written in a programming language such as Java or C or Python and will be the mechanism for network programmability. So where will we see software-defined networking? We believe we will see it in every area of networking from campus to data center to wide area networks, service providers at the service provider edge, and also used by cloud providers. So a few observations and recommendations. Software-defined networking is still being defined. It's an evolutionary process, not revolutionary, and it's a journey, not a one-time event. So essentially, SDN is designed to configure, control, and manage a network programmatically there are already successful SDN applications in production, and we recommend, as we did with cloud, to start small and grow your SDN capabilities over time. Please feel free to contact Worldwide Technology with any questions you have concerning software-defined networking, and thank you very much for your time.